Hello, it's Mark Gavor again. We're looking at a more complicated linear program. This is still a maximization problem. It's in three variables, x1, x2, x3. And it has four constraints, as you can see, 55, 26, 30, and 57. We're going to use the same method to solve it as we did before, which is solver. I'm going to write my answers in this area or set up the problem in this area based on this problem statement. So what would I like? I want to have my objective function first. Let me highlight that or bold it and make it bigger. And then I have my variables. What do I have? I have x1, x2, x3, x4. I don't have to necessarily make them subscripts. Not needed. And I will have, they call it p, but I'm still going to call it z because that's what we're used to calling it. So there are my variables. And I want to put a box around all of that. I want to highlight my variables, and I use the same color scheme I used on this problem, which is different than the last one, and I'll make them bold. So here's where the variables are going to go, and let's put the coefficients down here. Actually, I made a mistake. There are not four variables. There are just three. No, no issues. If I make a mistake, I fix it. What are my variable? What are my coefficients? 20, 10, 15. I'm going to highlight this section in yellow again because that is where my answers will go. I'm setting it up that way. So I have to set up what Z is going to be. I could start it off with Z equals, and I could do 20 times C12, like I did in the first problem, plus. But once I get above two variables, I get a little lazy, and I want to use what we call sum product, which we covered in class. It says array 1 times array 2, so it's going to say this array is the first one, comma, this array is the second one. And you see I have zero there. So if I put ones in for each one, it has 20 plus 10 plus 15 is 45. So that works out pretty well. Now what do I want to do? I want to put in the constraints. And I will use the same color scheme here and have the variable, at least the coefficients, in the same column. But if you recall, this is the left-hand side. This is the inequality. And this is the right-hand side. And I want to put borders around that. In fact, I want to put... I have how many constraints? I have four constraints. So I can put borders all around that. And every inequality is a less than or equal to sign. So I can extend those down. I seem to have one, two, three, four, five. I don't need the fifth one, right? I can get rid of that. Remember, the left-hand side is where my answers are going to go. The right-hand side, so let's, the right-hand side, I just now want to fill in everything that's in this area. So what do I have? I have coefficients in the first constraints of 3, 2, and 5. The right-hand side, the constraint is 55. The second one is 2, 1, 1. 
and the constraint on the right hand side is 26. The third one is 113 and the constraint is 30. The fourth one is 524, 524, and the constraint is 57. Now, in the left-hand side, I have to put my equation. I want to put equals, and I will use the same sum product. If I put SUMP, it will come up with sum product. I double-click on it, it puts it up here. I want to take these three numbers times these three numbers, and it puts a zero there. Now, I can do the same for the next four, but if I go here, and I believe if I put a dollar sign between the C and the 12, and between the E and the 12, it will say, what that will mean is, if I copy this down, in each case here, I'm at C to E17, so I'm in row 17. If I go down one, C to E18, but I stay in row 12 for this one. It, it locks these in. So that's good. So, so I'm all for shorthand. So now if I put one in again, let's see what happens. One, one, one. I still get my 45 there. Here I get 10, as I would have 3 plus 2 plus 5. Here I get 2 plus 1 plus 1. Here we get 1 plus 1 plus 3, which is 5, and I get 5 plus 2 plus 4, which is 11. So we've done it properly. So now I can go to Solver, which is under the Data tab. Click on Solver. Cell must be a single objective cell. Oh, that's because I have more, more cells highlighted. I had all these cells highlighted here. It thinks that's my objective. So really what I want to do is go here and my objective is always my Z. I'm maximizing again and I want to adjust these three variables, C12 through E12. And now I just changed that, sorry. And I want to add then some constraints. And I want to add four of them. So I want to add and it won't work. Let me close this. I think I have too many cells highlighted. Go to solver again. And now I want to probably delete these. I don't want these constraints. So let's start again with new constraints. F12, that's right. I want to add a constraint. So what do I want to add? I want to add this one, less than or equal to, and this one. I want to add another one. So I'll do that, and I'll take the 26. I'll add that. I go to my third constraint, which I put my F19, still less than or equal to, and I put 30 as the right hand side okay and you see I have that so I have 17 18 19 now if I add another one it's going to add it on the top just so remember that so I forgot to add the fourth one if I go here I do 0 which is F20 and I'll add the right hand side which is H20 and I've added them all so we're okay Simplex linear programming, make unconstrained variables non-zero non or non-negative, and I say solve. And it gives me my answer. It gives me this first constraint I can see is fully binding. The second constraint is fully binding. There's slack in the third constraint, 27, 4 to 30, and the fourth constraint is completely binding. Why don't I add the three other reports and it will put the three right here between problem one and problem two and it calls it answer report two sensitivity report two limits report two we'll go over what those reports and the interpretation of them 
in a third video. Thank you very much.